The International Whitewater Hall of Fame recognizes and honors individuals who have made significant contributions to whitewater-related activities. The first class of honorees was inducted in 2005, and honorees from Australia, Canada, the Czech Republic, France, Germany, New Zealand, Slovakia, and the United States have joined their ranks. We're proud to honor their legacy and those of the dozens of other world-class athletes, pioneers, advocates, and explorers from around the world who have also been nominated. Our honorees challenge themselves to achieve their best as athletes and advocates, adventurers and innovators. They're the icons that have made our sport what it is today, and we hope their stories will inspire you as well. The following are those we honor as members of the International Whitewater Hall of Fame Class of 2010. Explorer Mikey Abbott. Mikey Abbott is paddling's first truly global adventurer. Few have gone as far. He has opened up whole regions and inspired so many to find their passport and seek new adventures. Mikey has paddled extensively in river basins alongside the biggest mountains in the world, mainly on multi-day self-support expeditions, often on first descents, always celebrated with humility. His role as co-leader in the audacious Yarling Sangpo expedition in Tibet, described as the Everest of rivers, made Mikey the Edmund Hillary of New Zealand kayaking and dramatically illustrated his leadership ability. His other notable first descents include many rivers in India, Myanmar, Norway, Laos, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, and in his homeland, New Zealand. Mikey has also excelled in extreme races amongst the world's elite kayakers, placing first at Indonesia's Asahan Whitewater Festival, Norway's Voss Extreme Race, and Zambia's Zambezi Big Water International Races in 2000, and Norway's Sweet Boater Cross, Voss Race, and Italy's Val Sessia Cup in 2003. He's finished impressively at the New Zealand Wairoa Extreme Race and Montreal, Canada's Big Water Invitational, and logged top 20 placings for New Zealand at the Freestyle World Championships. Mikey has advanced the sport in New Zealand by guiding groups of recreational kayakers from abroad around the country and guided film crews for TV and video productions about his home whitewater. He has toured with slideshows of his expeditions and has published articles that have inspired paddlers around the world to achieve their paddling dreams. He stated his life interest as surfing, rock climbing, and traveling along with Dalbot, expensive scotch, and cheap beer. Pioneer Theo Bach. Theo Bach was renowned in his day as Germany's first river explorer, an accomplished racer, and the organizer of the first German national championships. Born in 1910, Theo pursued his love of rivers by being the first to experience them with his buddy Kurt Sigrist during the 1930s. Their first descents captured many of the untamed rivers of Germany and Austria, including sections of the Stillach in 1935, the Jakenklam in 1936, Fritzbach, Inn, Taka, Ada, Salzakofen, and Dora Baltea in 1938, and Rosanna in 1939. In 1953, at the age of 43, he had traveled to Colorado for the Fibark Downriver Race and finished second after stopping to help Roger Paris when he saw his boat had filled with water. The exciting high water race in which a record five craft completed the course was chronicled in an article in Time magazine. A few score miles from its source in the snows of Colorado, the Arkansas River becomes a bruising stream, sweeping along at eight to 10 miles per hour and turning into turbulent whitewater where great rocks challenge its course. The river is a trout fisherman's paradise and a boatman's purgatory. In early June, two Germans arrived at its banks, not to fish, but to scout the Arkansas for what is widely regarded as the world's longest, roughest riverboat race. Along 30 miles of river, on either side of the mining and tourist town of Salida, Theo Bach, age 43, and Eric Seidel, 26. Members of the Munich Kayak Club scrambled along the bank, noting treacherous cross currents, whirlpools, and lurking rocks. Their Teutonic thoroughness was warranted to avoid upsets and death. Time Magazine, July 6, 1953. Following the race, Theo commented, for a man of my age, this race is enough. Though he stopped paddling whitewater actively, he moved into a new phase of his whitewater life. He organized Germany's first whitewater races, such as the first German national championships, the Amer race, and others. As his son Franz reflects on his enthusiasm for the sport, he was a dynamic, good-looking person, and after retiring, became well-known for his shops named Sportbach in Munich. 
He was able to continue his association with the sport by organizing events and did so for many years. Champion Mikhail Martikhan Mikhail Martikhan had firmly established himself in 1995 as one of the best C1 paddlers of all time, beginning with his arrival on the international scene at 16 as the youngest winner of a World Cup slalom canoeing event. Three months later, now 17 years old, Martikhan bettered the score of defending champion Lukas Pallertz of the Czech Republic to become the first Olympic champion to represent independent Slovakia at the 1996 Olympics on the Okoe River outside of Atlanta. A veteran of four Olympic Games, Martikhan has won more Olympic medals than any other individual in slalom, earning either a gold or silver medal in each of his Olympic appearances. At the 2000 Sydney Games, Martikhan entered as the favorite and registered the best score in the qualifying round, but was only in fifth place after the first run of the finals. In the second run, he paddled the perfect course with the fastest time and moved up to the silver medal position behind Tony Estengay of France. In 2004, Martikhan again led the qualifying round and earned the highest score in the semifinals, which also served as the first run of the final. After the second run, it appeared that he had regained the Olympic title. However, after a video review, referees awarded him two penalty seconds, which pushed him 12 hundredths of a second behind Estengay for another silver finish. He returned to convincingly claim Olympic gold in Beijing in 2008. Since 1995, he has competed and won a medal in every World Championship event and is a winner of the Canoe Slalom Grand Slam with his first place finishes in the Olympics, World Championships, European Championships, and World Cup. As a junior, he won the Junior World Championships twice. As an adult, Mikal has won the World Championships four times and the Euro Championships twice. Bill Endicott, former U.S. team slalom coach, notes, one big reason Martikhan does so well is that he just takes more training runs than anyone else. I remember once in Athens that in a one-hour session, many paddlers took five runs, but he took nine. Former U.S. slalom team member Kent Ford, who has served as the on-site announcer for each Olympic Games in which Mikal has competed, notes, Martikhan's stamina for pre-race training runs is unmatched. Frequently, this lands him on top of the podium. His quiet, unassuming demeanor is understated for someone who is truly a national hero for Slovakia. Advocate Risa Shimoda Risa Shimoda has been one of the most prolific river stewardship organizers for grassroots advocacy, freestyle paddling, and whitewater park promotion in the history of kayaking in the United States. After a very modest career as a K1, C1, and C2 slalom competitor, Risa made a name for herself as a hold-nothing-back eastern squirter and creaker who developed a taste for big western hydraulics along the way. She distinguished herself with the first female descent of the Green River Narrows and second female runs on the North Fork Payette and Niagara Gorge. She's competed since the 80s and has represented the U.S. in six freestyle world championships. However, it has been through volunteerism and her professional training and marketing that she's made her greatest contributions to whitewater kayaking, notably as a board member, president, and executive director of American Whitewater. She has catalyzed or been very involved with securing flows and establishing permanent public access on the Tallulah and Niagara Gorges, Russell Fork, Green Narrows, Upper Yak, Watauga, Tuckasegee, and Upper Nantahala Rivers. Risa fueled American Whitewater's resources in the early 1980s by adding the Marketplace to the annual Gauley River Festival and again in the early 2000s by developing corporate partnerships. She founded and coordinated the National Organization of Whitewater Rodeos from 1989 to 2002, which included as many as 40 whitewater festivals. As the marketing director for Perception Kayaks in the 90s, Risa fully supported river conservation. Perception was the second company to join the Outdoor Industry Conservation Alliance, whose early beneficiary was Idaho Rivers United and its fight to keep water in the Payette River. She also catalyzed an industry initiative to encourage young paddlers with the Symposium on Youth Instruction. Risa co-produces international conferences for whitewater courses and park leaders, helps whitewater park advocates formulate project plans, chairs USA Freestyle Kayaking and the International Whitewater Hall of Fame, and organizes the Potomac Whitewater Festival. She has served on boards of the Adventure Sports Center International, Nantahala Outdoor Center, National River Cleanup Week, Conservation Alliance, and the North American Paddle Sports Association. 
The image of whitewater sport has moved from exciting and adventurous into edgy and dangerous, comments Risa. My work now focuses on doing my part to bring whitewater to more people in friendly, familiar terms, so they will include it in their portfolio of lifelong outdoor activity options. Advocate Helen Brownlee Helen Brownlee inherited her dad's enthusiasm and love of the sport and her mother's practicality and organizational skills. Through a natural progression to competition, Helen successfully rose to state and national levels in Australian slalom and wild water racing. In 1972, Helen was one of only two women appointed to judge for the Munich Olympic Games canoe slalom events. She stayed on to win the first international slalom medal for Australia at the International Slalom Race in Lingoclin, Wales, before returning home to be elected secretary of the newly formed Australian Slalom and Wild Water Committee. She almost single-handedly increased the competitive ranks from five athletes in 1973 to 28 athletes in 1979 and initiated a national slalom judges program through which over 430 volunteers were trained and examined over a 10-year period. In 1976, Helen was the first woman appointed to the ICF Technical Committee Slalom and Wild Water Racing and remained until she was elected the first female director of the ICF board in 1988. In 1985, Helen was awarded the Medal of the Order of Australia, OAM, for services to the sport of canoeing, and was elected as the first woman president of the Australian Canoe Federation, now known as Australian Canoeing. During her tenure, the Australian Institute of Sport Program's elite athletes began to create winning performances at World Championships and Olympic Games. In 1989, Helen became the first woman president of the New South Wales Olympic Council, and in 1991, was elected the first woman executive board member of the Australian Olympic Committee, positions she still holds today. She tirelessly encouraged participation in the sport in these island nations at all levels, particularly among women. Helen's profession as an educator dovetailed with her avocation when the IOC endorsed the inclusion of canoe slalom for the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney. Helen was given an opportunity to develop programs for the 2000 Olympic and Paralympic Games, which fostered the involvement of over 750,000 students in Olympic activities leading up to what were viewed as the best games ever. Helen has made a major contribution to the organization of canoeing here in Australia and internationally, said AOC President John Coates. She is one of the driving forces behind the Pierre de Coubertin Awards, which are awarded for fair play and excellence to students in schools throughout Australia. Our honorees have challenged themselves to achieve their best as athletes and advocates, adventurers and innovators. We hope their stories will inspire you as well.